Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our first example of how to use the Compton effect in a realistic situation. Let's say that we're scattering x-rays off of a crystal and the x-rays have an incoming frequency such that the wavelength is 5 picometers. That's 5 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. And they're scattered, let's say, at three angles. One, the angle is zero degrees, the other set is at 45 degrees, and the third set is scattered at 90 degrees. And of course, this is the Compton scattering equation, which we have rewritten here to calculate the outgoing wavelength or the wavelength of the outgoing photons, I should say. Let's figure, let's go ahead and calculate this quantity right here, because after all, in this particular example, the wavelength of the scattered photons, the scattered X-ray photons, is going to be the wavelength of the incoming photons, 5 picometers, plus this quantity right here, which is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules, that's Planck's constant, divided by the mass of the scattering particle, which in this case is an electron, times the speed of light. And that has to be multiplied times 1 plus the cosine of phi. Like that. Okay, let's work that out and see what we get. And by now that should become a fairly uh, very familiar number because it's always going to be scattering off electrons. That's a typical situation. You're always going to have the same quantity right here. So this becomes 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Divide by the mass of an electron and divide by the speed of light. And yes, you would get the following. Lambda prime. So the, the wavelength of the scatter photons are going to be equal to 5 picometers plus that's going to be 2.42 times 10 to the minus 12, which is, of course, picometers, times the quantity 1, not 1 plus, but 1 minus minus the cosine of phi. There we go. So now what we need to do is calculate what this wavelength will be for the three scattering angles, starting with phi equals to zero degrees. The first angle we get lambda prime is equal to 5 picometers plus 2.42 picometers times 1 minus the cosine of zero degrees. And of course, the cosine of zero degrees is one. One minus one is zero. So this is simply equal to five picometers plus zero. There's no change, simply five picometers. In other words, if there's no interaction between photons and the electrons, they'll just go straight through. No interaction means no loss of energy and no change in the wavelength. But if they're scattered at 45 degrees, then you know that the wavelength of the scattered photons is going to be equal to the original wavelength plus the change in the wavelength due to the Compton effect, which is in this case 2.42 picometers times 1 minus the cosine of 45 degrees, which is equal to 5 picometers plus 2.42 picometers times Let's say 1 minus 45 cosine, that would be 0 0.293, which is equal to 5 picometers plus 0 0.79, oh, no, 0 0.71, 0 0.71 picometers, which means that the wavelength of the scattered photons, the ones that are scattered at 45 degrees, are not going to be 5.71 picometers. So you can see that photons scattering off of electrons and those photons having very high energies or very short wavelengths, the change in the wavelength is actually fairly significant. And then finally, for a scattering angle of 90 degrees, we get lambda prime, the wavelength of the scattered photons, 5 picometers plus 2.42 picometers times 1 minus the cosine of 90 degrees. Of course, the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to 0. That means it's 1 times this, 5 picometers plus 2.42 picometers, or 
7.42 picometers. Again, a very significant change in the wavelength at when the, when the scattering angle is 90 degrees. And that's how we implement the Compton effect equation. Now we'll have a second part to this problem, so if you want to see some other things, stay tuned and we'll show you some other effects that we see and that we can calculate using the Compton effect.